This is my family shed that was built around 20 years ago. It's a two-story shed that was purchased from Home Depot for around $5,000 in the early 2000s. About three years ago, I revisited the shed with my family for the first time since I was a kid. Thinking about renovating this old shed into the tiny house that we originally wanted. We got Danner here. Danner's gonna be lead project manager, so I don't know. We came here to assess it. Oh, we also have my sister over here, Erin. Boop. And we discovered that it had been completely taken over by Mother Nature. We got our CD player. Oh, nice. <laughs> like I remember it. <laughs> ah, yeah, me too. Oh, cool. you open that. Oh. Oh. And she broke it. At this time, I knew absolutely nothing about construction. I couldn't tell you what framing a house meant. I had never used a circular saw before, and I definitely couldn't swing a hammer. Well, I guess I still can't swing a hammer, but that's beside the point. I didn't really have a reason for restoring the shed at the time, but I knew that I wanted to do it, and I knew that I wanted to film the entire process and share our story on YouTube. So for the last few years, while I've been completing my computer engineering degree, me and my dad have been restoring the shed whenever we've had some free time on the weekends. We've done pretty much everything ourselves from taking down the rotten wood to constructing the new additions. I've learned so much along the way in doing this project and I've been happy to be able to share my experience with you in all the videos that we've created. We've been grateful for all the help we've had along the way from our friends and family, the local community, and for all the subscribers who've watched the videos cheered us on in the comments, and helped us fund the project on Patreon. I honestly think I would have given up on this project a long time ago if it weren't for all of you. When we first started the project, we had my uncle Matthew Danner, an Alabama building inspector, come out to the shed and give us some advice on how we can make the shed meet building code. We followed his advice throughout the project, and now that the framing is complete, we're finally ready to start roughing in our electrical. In this episode, Matthew will be joining us again to guide us in roughing in our electrical so we can efficiently run our wires and pass our inspection. All right, Matthew, thank you so much for coming out. Absolutely, glad to be so, back out here. Looks like y'all have got a lot of work done since the last time I was here. Yeah, so the last time you came out here was like two years ago, maybe a little more. Right, right. And we were looking at, will this meet code? And so now we have you back here again today for some electrical. So I heard you got some electrical boxes already mounted inside and uh, looks like we need to go through and talk about and kind of get a plan together for how we're gonna get power into the building and how to distribute it once we get inside. And then we'll touch on some uh, electrical uh, code uh, questions that you might have and kind of some scenarios on how we can uh, do it efficiently. First, what I'd recommend is maybe we go around and we take a look at the uh, service entrance on the back, kind of see where we're gonna get the power from the utility company coming in. Typically, we'll get a meter mounted on the back of the structure, uh, run conduit, schedule 40 underground from the pole uh, to, the, to the structure proper depth. Go through and have your disconnect on the outside because I think we're gonna be further than the code requires to do a back-to-back -back setup and uh, then we'll see about the placement of the panel inside and uh, how to pull the wires for our home runs from that point. Yeah and uh, I'm glad we have you here because we really want to be efficient with this and we went to Home Depot today we spent twelve hundred dollars on stuff for this and Ouch. the wire alone was like a thousand dollars so we really want to make sure we're efficient with running those home runs so. Sounds great well let's go take a look. All right let's do it. Thanks. All right, so we're at the back of the house now. First thing we need to do is figure out where we're bringing in the power. So we know we have our pole over there and we're gonna be running it underground, but we need to figure out where we're gonna mount our box. Right, so Danner, it looks like this was the original portion of the structure that was built. And then you've got your addition that comes in right about here. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what we would be doing is running the wire from the uh, disconnect 
Uh, so we'll have a meter base mounted coming underground from the utility supplier uh, pole. Uh, and then from the meter base to the disconnect, disconnect into the panel inside the house. And so if I'm right, the panel is going to sit somewhere on this wall uh, a couple of feet back. And so probably be a good place to put the meter and the disconnect somewhere in this general area. All right, so this will be the main shutoff for the house, and then we run inside directly to our breaker box. Absolutely. All right, and then so where is the power going to come out of the box? A couple of options. So we could either come out of the back of the disconnect and run straight through the wall, or we could come out of the top of the disconnect, go up and come over, and then drop down into the panel. I'm all for not wasting wire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> straight through. I, I know it sounds good to me. <laughs> okay, so this is the addition that we built, and... It's kind of cool because this is the original abandoned shed right here. See, we just kind of left it how it is. But we're thinking about using this wall to put our main breaker panel. Okay, so that would work. So our distribution panel, if we mount it on this wall, it would be a surface mount uh, coming on. So you'll end up having to build out uh, some framing and protect the wires obviously coming through. Uh, typically, you know, you'd run it either in conduit. It can either be placed in the stud cavity wall itself and come into the panel. Uh, or if, uh, if you're going to leave this exposed, just make it run in conduit from the disconnect to the panel. And then all your home runs would be coming out of the top of this panel or, or the bottom or the side, depending on where they're going. So let's go take a look at the, uh, at the runs and, and see which runs we need and which way would be the best direction to run them. Right on the other side of this wall is a bathroom. Okay. And so we have a shower literally right here. So I don't know if that's a problem, if we wanted to put it in the studs or just if that could be a problem, just having the shower right on the other side. The wiring itself can go in the sud cavity. Uh, nothing per code is going to tell you that you can't just because there's a shower on the other side. You just couldn't have the panel facing into the bathroom. It would have to be out in this room. But uh, just there, there is some isolation there, and uh, it should be fine. All right. All right, let's check out the home runs. So we're in the bathroom now, and this is a, what do you think? This is going to be an awesome bathroom. So we have a corner shower over here. We have a sink right here, a window, and we already ran all of our plumbing, so we're good to go with that, but we're right on the other side of the wall now and thinking about putting our distribution panel here and wondering if we should do it inside or mounted on the outside. So previously I'd heard you talk about going through and having some uh, future solar or some generators. So we kind of got some options. So when we've got power from the electric provider or on a sunny day running solar or in the case of an emergency or power outage running generator if it, you know, it was dark. Thinking about those things, it might be a good idea to put a panel on the exterior, surface mount the panel uh, toward the workroom itself so you can come back and make some of those changes later. There'll have to be some transfer switches, some lockouts, some of those things to, to keep everybody safe once those solar or generator powers run and can't have it back feeding back to the system. So simply by having that box surface mounted, I think it gives you better options. So certainly we consider it. Yeah, and so we're, we're doing this for code right now, but ultimately we want to be completely off the grid. So I think it will be good to be able to access all that later on since we're going to kind of do it as we go. And we kind of did the same thing with our plumbing too. We mounted it mostly on the inside just so we can get to it and not through the studs just right. in case something goes wrong later. And so when you go through and have the ability to now that that plumbing that's on the outside wall is run on the face, you can go through and box it in and, and cover it up as well. But also it allows you to run your full thickness of your uh, rock wool insulation, uh, which will give you a better R value in that wall without being compressed. Yeah, so it'll be great for freeze protection and easy to access. So both of those are good things. So. I say we should go ahead and figure out what we're going to do for our home runs. Sounds great. Let's do it. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing. He's trying to figure out a good way to say I fucked up, Dad. Man, so what happened was, <laughs> I was, I was ready to get some stuff done. I saw them pointing over and they're like, yeah, like you've done this before, handed me the crowbar. And he was like, yeah, right there next to that one that's, it's cut, that's cut right there. So you're just taking it, the wood ends right there and it's, it's cut. So you can see it when you get up there, you'll see it. So I saw that and I was like, all right, man, I'm taking down this wall then. And I just started going at it. Get it? 
What are you doing? What are you doing, Dan? Stop. You said take down the. No, take down the roof. This one right here. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe you just did that. <laughs> the roof. Why would you take that down? You watched me do it. I wasn't watching we you at fine. all. I oh just was listening. We, we weren't paying attention. Why would you take that down? <laughs> Show them what you're supposed to take down. Oh, the roof right there. <laughs> no, don't, please don't take it <laughs> All right, so we got some of the old OSB from the roof off and we're gonna be creating a chase right here and eventually building a wall that'll be flat right here, but um, we're just gonna be using this area to run some wires through. So go ahead and feed it down your, stand on the stairs and feed it down your hole right there to that box. Come past the box, about yay far, right there. That's a good start. And then this is going to come up to here, and this is going to come down. Up through that hole and down. Right. We're just going to feed this back through. So, for example, I'm going to make sure, too, that that's long enough. Again, we don't want to waste the wire. This stuff's expensive, right? So this has got to, you got to figure this is going to be, you know, yay high up in there. We're going to come all over. We're going to come in up about there, and then we're going to come down because of the panel. So we're going to come down somewhere like that. Then. All right. Go ahead and start feeding this and come through the hole. From the bottom, right? Yeah. To the left. Keep on coming. All right. Keep, keep pushing me. You okay? Yeah. What'd you hear? It was like when I was when it like yanked my hand on that thing, there was a nail sticking through the roof. Oh yeah, you, like... you said there was a nail. Yeah. All right, so you got the first wire pulled in the box. It's gonna be your first home run. This is gonna be your uh, switch that's gonna be your three-way for your lights, also for your den. And I think uh, y'all talked about also wanting to switch the kitchen light off this. So, you know, you wanna make sure you got a lot uh, enough to work with past. I used to like to use your dikes as a measurement. Should give you plenty. And so what you want to do is go ahead and you've got to have a staple uh, close to the box there within about four inches uh, or less. So we might have to go through and use some spreaders to uh, keep that wire in the center of the stud. So, but for right now, just to hold, let's get a staple and then you can go through and put one uh, temporarily in and then we'll come back and attach. We'll come back and attach whatever we need to shortly. And if need be, we can take that out. But let's get a wire count, see how many we've got here before we permanently start stapling. And what I like to do, especially where we've got boxes, 
we've got multiple wires coming into. You know, this is just temporary for right now. Okay. We're going to go through and we'll do wire management, get them all secured and stapled. But for just now, that's just kind of keeping us where we need to be. Eventually, we'll also go through and we'll put another one up here before we go through our top plate with our hole. Okay. So you can go through and you can put your wires in. And so you can use these on the underside of your uh, floor joists uh, to secure your wires coming through. Got your little palm nailer, man. You should be like palm nailer. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not. Don't bend it. Oh, man. I suck at these things. That's how that one's gonna be. Just like that. So what you can do on that, <coughs> bless you. All right, so that kind of gives you an idea of what you got. So you're good right there. In fact, we're gonna give it just a little bit back, okay? And since since we're gonna go through and out of this box, since we're bringing in just one circuit to feed this entire bathroom, we're gonna feed our light, we're gonna feed our switch circuit, we're gonna feed everything. We're not gonna staple these wires up. Pretty much gonna wait till we get done pulling all the wires before we start stapling and managing and telling those wires what we need them to do, okay? I'm run one. Okay. Can go through and talk about uh, pulling a home run for the living room. And then we've got several that we're going to have to pull across for the kitchen. Uh, we're going to have to have our two small appliance uh, circuits. Uh, also, pulling circuit for a microwave, pulling circuits for your uh, washer, pulling circuits for your dryer, uh, pulling a separate circuit for your disposal separate circuit for the refrigerator. So we've got a lot of wires that we need to pull over to the kitchen, so maybe we'll just do that. don't go through and drill in the middle. If we get too far out to the front, to the face, or too far out to the back, then that's the potential for a screw or a fastener or a nail to come in and actually hit that wire, and so we've got to provide some wire protection via nail plates. Uh, so now we can go ahead and pull a home run to our fridge. We can go ahead and pull a home run even for here. So we've got a couple more that we've got to drill through. So above, these little cripples above the double top plate, We've got to drill those, so let's keep them in a, in a straight line so we can split our uh, insulation, our rock wool. We can either come down the same hole and come across one, two, and that way we don't have to do two up there and come on down. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and drill two more holes, one, okay. two at 59, and then catch one, two, three, and let's drill those out in the center. I'll grab you later. this up for, so you'd have it too and basically what it is hey here's the typical breaker size typical wire size typical three-way a couple of options 
for that three-way for the lights, which we've gone with the first because we made the first box hot. It kind of gives you a, a pretty generic answer. We've already got the home run pulled to the bathroom. That's going to be at your outlet. Once you pull out of here, you can go through and you can hit. Uh, I, next thing I'd probably jump to would be my light switch. Light switch to the light. If you've got any other fans or accessories, you can either come out of this box or that box for the feed. It really doesn't matter. Everything past this point is going to be GFCI protected because you're going to have either a GFCI outlet in here or you're going to have that GFCI uh, outlet in the panel, one of the two. But whatever we do, even though we need outlets outside in some places, we can't go out of this room since we're running one circuit anywhere else. So 20 amp comes in, it only stays in the bathroom, can't jump anywhere else. Here we really haven't we really haven't established a home run yet for either this room. We've pulled several to the to the kitchen. We've still got some more to go. Uh, and we've still got home runs to pull upstairs. So let's talk about the kitchen since we're uh, since we've been working on it. All we've pulled is the refrigerator dedicated circuit. We've got a home run, gonna pick up our uh, GFI circuit for the uh, required two 20 amp small appliance countertop type circuits. So we're gonna feed the next uh, couple outlets off of it. And so we've still gotta bring another home run in here to pick up switches for uh, disposal. Go ahead and get you a light off of it because you're really not doing anything with it per se and I'm sure it's gonna be an LED. And that's the neat thing, now that all the lights are LEDs, you're not really burning a whole lot of power. We've got 14 wire, okay? So once you leave your your switches, run 14 to your lights. You don't need to run your 12. Okay. Uh, and you can even run plugs off 14. There's nothing wrong with it. You can run 14, everything's so efficient now compared to the way it was in, 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 in the old days that you can go through and you can run that, you know, 10 outlets on, you know, on a, on a 14 or, or, or 12 on a, on a 12, <coughs> uh, or I'm sorry, 12 on a 20 amp circuit. But at the end of the day, the National Electric Code really doesn't tell you that you've got to be limited to X amount. It gives you a percentage, no more than 80% of the load on that circuit that's intended for. So uh, the good thing is all of the new appliances, all of the new lights, everything's so low power consumption, we don't hit many of those at all uh, as far as is getting up to that 80 percent limit so as small as this is with the circuits you've got shouldn't be that difficult mm -hmm. right so you're going to get one you're going to get one you're going to get your 220 for the okay. dryer 220 you're going to get you 110 for the washing Washer. machine you're going to pick up another circuit uh, for your disposal okay. this is your second small appliance uh, circuit 20 amp for the kitchen. Okay. We're going to feed an additional outlet and then once the countertop comes out you'll have one for the outlet right, at the end. That, okay. That's right. And then one You'll more. pick one more for the lighting and for the outlets over here. So you can go hit your outlets, hit switch and then carry on. Uh, and then also pick up one in the den. Again up upstairs I think you'll go through and run Maybe one, two. one circuit for the outlets and lights combined. Uh, upstairs and then go through and I'd run another circuit or two dedicated to your desk area wherever you've got that uh, heavy concentration of computers and equipment. We'll probably just probably do two for that. You'll have yeah, plenty we'll have just yeah, in we'll case. Be, yeah. And then of course plan and, and think about what you've got outside too. So you've got uh, make sure you've got boxes big enough you know two three gang boxes for the switches that may control floodlights outside or front porch lights or those types of things. Any mechanical equipment outside, I need an outlet, you know, within a certain distance of the mechanical equipment to be able to service that equipment. So if we've got a heat and air unit, a mini split, anything like that, whatever our outside piece of equipment is, I need to make sure we've got an outlet beside. So think about your lights, you know, uh, when you go through and talk about doing, uh, you know, whatever type of uh, ceiling uh, finish that you've got, whether it be drywall or metal or, you know, rustic wood, you know, are you thinking some can lights? Are you thinking any type of ceiling fans? Anything like that? Uh, I don't know that I'd put a ceiling fan because of the height, maybe, but uh, certainly uh, cans are really nice. There, There's several products out there now that uh, you can uh, install fairly flat light fixtures in a standard uh, junction box. So you don't have to have the expensive you know, type of uh, cans with the with the LED uh, disc lights in them. So, those are the ones we're always seeing at bargain bins. 
those, and we can yeah, start just the, finding those pucks, and they yeah, just go in. Right yeah. Yeah, yeah, go oh, we got, like, expensive now. All kinds of. Oh yeah, beasts. yeah, yeah. So we get those for free or a buck. Yep. But this is that gets wired in. Right. And it has a and it has a mounting. So it's got a mounting, and this has got a driver. You just need to make sure that wherever it's plugged in to. Uh, this is 110. These are 110, so that just gets wired right into your box. This is 110, That's so straight 110. to a junction box, and it goes. Boom. Very nice. Yeah. I like. And we yeah. got we got a few of those. Yeah. Right? Find yeah. find find some more of those in the bargain bin. Those are nice. Well, we can get those every week. Nice. They're, they're piles. Always. Every week. So I think we're at a good stopping point now. So we're gonna finish the rest in the next video, but we managed to get a lot of our home runs done. We really only have um, some outlets and lights to do next. So we'll be doing that. We're also gonna be meeting with the electrical inspector and we're gonna ask him some questions too, but it was really helpful to have Matthew come out. We're really thankful for it. And I think I learned a lot from it. This was my first time ever doing electrical. So it was really great having him here and I am gonna be doing some summer classes, so um, I won't be able to work on it all the time, but we're gonna be up here a good bit, and we have a lot of fun stuff planned for the summer. We, After we get our electrical finished and inspected, we'll get to do insulation, and then we also just placed our order on our new sawmill, so that should be here soon. So we're gonna be cutting down trees, sawing lumber, and we also have our septic tank. We're gonna be doing that soon, so just a lot of good stuff to look forward to. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Turn on those notifications. And just a big thank you to everyone who's watching the videos and especially those who have backed us over on Patreon. Really appreciate your support and welcome to all the new subscribers. And I'll see you guys in the next video.